Hello! I made it! No problems! Welcome, happy Saturday. Um, I'm Sarah Mee, and we're sewing um, what used to be the Sagebrush Top by Friday Pattern Company. <clears throat> Super cute top, um, and I really wanted a dress version, and then I kind of went down a rabbit hole with my dress form, and um, it, it still is definitely inspired by the Sagebrush Top, but um, is um, pretty... The, the subtle details are different, so uh, there's going to be a lot of plaid matching, and if you want help cutting one out with lots of plaid matching, we spent a lot of time on it, so you can kind of skip through that previous stream, and it's linked in the description. Um, so I hope you're all well, and um, I'm ready to get going. I'm so ready to sew. All I've been doing is editing videos, and uh, I need the stress reliever of sewing. I don't know about you guys, so... And if you're here to escape the news, welcome. Hey, Malin. Malin, you're always the first to say hello. I love it. <laughs> it's almost your bedtime, I know. I have this hair right behind my glasses. You know that? I've been tying a mask, piece of a mask elastic on the back of my glasses. Super classy, right? <laughs> you might see it because I have my braids in today. So, um... I just haven't been able to go to the eye doctor to get my glasses adjusted, so they keep slipping down my nose. So I have this piece of mask elastic, um, and it holds my glasses on. So I am not known for being classy. So if you're here for that, well, sorry. Um, all right, so I let's see. After the stream, as I was posting a little recap on Instagram, just like a picture of what we cut out, I realized as I was typing all the modifications we did, I forgot to cut out pockets. So we were all slacking, but I was pretty punchy by the end of that stream. I know I was pretty hungry and it had been, it was a long stream. So, um, I made some, I just, I have like a pocket pattern that I just have hanging up at my pattern table and it's kind of, uh, if I don't, if the pattern doesn't come with it, I just use it and cut it out. And then I just adjust it a little bit here and there and make the pocket opening smaller, bigger, whatever, if I need to. So I just cut out some, I've cut out some pockets. Um, I had scraps that were big enough. And then I ironed all the rough, I pieced the ruffle together and ironed it. I think when I cut this out, I cut it out upside down for what I had wanted. Cause I really had wanted, um, this was the big pile I cut out. Look at all this. Um, I really had wanted this little, this right here to be down here. And I think I cut it out upside down. So it's, I'm not going to get to see this. The seam allowance is going to go right here. So if I sew it in that, it might look wiggly if I don't sew it very straight. So we'll see. Um, and I've also been thinking a lot about all this ruffle. Um, I may pleat it if I have enough. Pleat it in a non, uh, non uh, precise way, uh, just as I go. Um, I also may um, sew it, so for the yoke seam, I can just put this in the yoke seam and the ruffle can hang out of the yoke seam on the bodice, but for the one around the skirt, I actually didn't really finish thinking that through on the pattern drafting because, do I have my little sketch here? Yeah, so this little ruffle right here at the bottom. That, uh, I'm showing it sewn into a seam, but I didn't put a seam on the skirt. Now I could just, you know, make a seam. That'd be fine. Hi, Derek. <laughs> good evening or good uh, morning. Yeah, it's still morning here. Good morning from a very dry and smoky California. <laughs> it literally looks overcast out. It's so smoky. Um, but God, that wetness sounds really nice. Um, so I thought about this and I was like, well, I don't really want to lose much length on my dress. I have time to think about this. One of the things I could do is sew my ruffle, you know, right sides together, turn it. So then I have this finished, ten, essentially a tube. And then I could gather that and just top stitch it on. I actually think like, while this could be a good idea, I think it could give us some issues, so. Hi, Leia. Oh, well, welcome back. Glad to see you. <laughs> so um, we'll see what we do there. I just kind of have it sitting here. I brought in my serger because either way, I may serge the top edge here so I don't have to deal with all this hoo-ha, all this unraveling. But like I said, I have time to think about my skirt ruffle. This is the ruffle I have set aside for the yoke. So 
Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, I know. I, I kind of took a break from live streams in September to work on videos. So I was only live on Saturdays. And I know the time is really difficult for a lot of folks. Um, I waffled on the time for so long in the beginning. And I finally was like, you know what? If I make it so that it's very easy for me to always make it on time, no problem. It'll be better overall for everybody, you know. But there's occasionally times where I will do it a little later. It's rare, but um, it's only rare because I don't hear a lot of feedback that that's what they want. Hi, Ray. Nice to see you. Hope you're feeling better. You were doing so good, too. You were kind of like, ooh, I might do these things because I'm feeling really good. And then you kind of don't. So I'm sorry about that. Okay. Um, should we get going? So um, I do have this uh, bias placket that will sew on almost last. So today I'm going to do this whole bodice, I'm hoping, um, which will mean um, gathers at the waist, French seams, um, setting in the sleeve with French seams. I know you always love when I do that. And then um, it has a ruffle of the yoke and the back looks like this as well. I definitely carried that over. Um, and then binding at the neckline. So I'll be able to do the entire bodice without this placket today. Pretty sure. As long as I don't get sidetracked. Who, me? So, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. So those are my little ruffle pieces, which I kind of got to decide if I'm going to pleat them or ruffle them. I kind of fought to have enough ruffle that looked somewhat the same, you know, like all cut at the same spot. Is it the spot I wanted? Not really, but that's okay. I, I will forget that eventually. I'll get over it, you know. This is my back, I can tell. Here's my little front. Here's my front. And um, I think we're doing um, ruffle like right off the bat. Oh, this was the other thing I was thinking. You know, I may end up binding this seam because um, of the ruffle. And I, I sh what I really should do is just cut some lining bodice pieces. Maybe that's what I should do really quick. Do I have enough fabric? I think I have enough fabric. That would be the best thing. Do I have enough fabric? <laughs> it's getting skint, y'all. <laughs> Let's see here. Look at this pile. <laughs> but it's all like pieces, like little, like, like strips. There's got to be something big enough, right? So. Oh, that's great. I'm so glad, Ray. You just piece, okay, Leia, full disclosure, I have definitely hacked this top. Like, I thought it would be a lot closer to the pattern, so if you need help or if you want um, guidance on something, just ask and I will happily help. So, okay, I can get my two fronts out of this. The smoke's really bugging my throat today, so, and then I, I blew out my um, serger, so hopefully we won't get tickles. I think I can do that, and I think I can get my, my back yoke here. <laughs> can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Let's see. Let's see. I think lining the yoke is a good idea for the yoke seam. I won't worry about it for the sleeves or anything like that. So. <laughs> Woohoo! Hi, Nicole. That's awesome. I'm so glad. <laughs> more time to watch live streams <laughs> work from home yep <laughs> i i probably did i cut everything out except i had forgotten pockets that was the only thing i've cut um off camera piece of small left artist that's awesome <laughs> i mean you know that's okay i've done that before you know it doesn't you you kind of you know, if you're not making a, a dress where, you know, you really need it to be a solid piece, I think piecing is, it, it has its moments, you know. You don't really end up carrying a whole lot. Okay, so I think, I think I can get one there. I'm kind of looking at my, my back here, and it has to be on the fold, so that's why I was like, can I reserve this side over here for the back? 
like this. Okay, so I got my, do I have my bag there? Ooh, ooh, I don't think I do. I might, I might. I don't want to take it off green, you know? I don't want it to shrink something weird. It would be so much better if it was like this, right? <laughs> mm, I may have to piece that, okay. All right, so let's get my fronts then. I'm not gonna worry about plaid matching on the inside. You're not telling on me, right? Oh, okay, cool. Oh, really late, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. It is bad here. All right, this piece is um, not big enough to put it on the fold. I guess I should have figured this out before I started, huh? But I know you guys don't mind the cutting. Ooh, this might work. Okay, this will not work. All right, let's get this one cut. Can I pretend to match the plaids? What if I do this? No. No. Maybe if I do this, ooh. It's not gonna be like matched, but at least it'll look um, symmetrical on the inside. You know what I mean, jelly beans? Okay. All right, so there's my, my fronts. And then let's see if my back is going to fit here. Let's see. That is actually folded on the line, which is great. Oh, I think I can do that. I have the tag here. So let me just hold it a little better. All right, so let's, let's pretend on this one too that we're matching. We're, we're doing something symmetrical. I always think um, about, um, so I'm one of those people that doesn't make anything very precious, you know, like I, I just, I will, I will give away things to people. They're like, oh, I like that. You know, I'm like, here, you can take it. Maybe you'll do better, you know, loving this thing that I have or whatever, or I will um, just give something away or whatever. And, um, but then I also have those moments where I'm like, oh, what if I died tomorrow? And my daughter's left with like all my things I made. And then like someday she gets into sewing and she's like, dang, my mom really didn't care a whole lot about this stuff. <laughs> I think she knows better, but you know what I mean? Ooh, let me just hack this here. These are like not the greatest scissors. You know, I didn't turn my air conditioning on because it said it was 75 in here, but I forgot how hot this light gets. So let me just go turn on my air conditioning just in just a minute, okay? <clears throat> It'll be better because of the heat too. And I shut my door. Okay, so this is my back. This is the lining one, right? Yeah, I don't want to like accidentally swap them. That would kind of make me mad. All right, so let's get these. Pretend ones here. Let's use this one since I didn't hack the seam allowance on this one on the shoulder there. <laughs> this one's not quite the full seam allowance. We were kind of fighting to get enough fabric at that point, I think. All right. This will make sewing those ruffles into the yoke a little bit better because um, I can, I don't have to worry about finishing the edge of the ruffle. I could bind it, but if I bind it, it creates a bulk, you know? 
Oh my gosh, scissors. I found my scissor sharpener and I brought it home. I'm gonna figure it out. Okay, so this is, wait, what? Is it did I just really cut that that bad? Linen, man. Yeah, pins could have helped, eh? All right. <laughs> hey, Melinda, welcome back. Aw, cats are all cuddling to keep warm. All right, these are my outer ones. Um, yeah, it's like 75 in here with, without the heat or the air on. You don't want our heat. The, um, fire stuff is no joke. Okay, this is my lining. This is my front bodice. That's my back bodice. These are my sleeves. So I'm going to set these guys aside here. I'm going to set you aside. And let's talk about my ruffle. So um, I'm going to put my ruffle up to the placket edge. I'm so itchy. Um, and uh, the placket's going to finish the edge there. So I'll probably actually stop the ruffle maybe. So it's like this is what I'm trying to think of. So the ruffle here could hang free right here at the placket. Or it could be sewn into the seam. I think I'm going to sew it into the seam. Both have advantages and disadvantages as far as how they look. Um, but I think I'm going to keep the placket its own thing. Like I'm not going to take the ruffle across there like I had originally planned. Um, then we decided to do a placket, or I did. <laughs> so um, I think I'm going to sew it into the seam so I have a nice clean line going along this placket edge here. And yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So then I don't have to worry about clean finishing the ruffle edge except out here. So now I could put the ruffle into the armhole seam. And that is probably what I'll do. I, I have it pictured here as if it's hanging free, but I think that would actually be kind of weird. And I'm pretty sure the pattern doesn't have you do it that way. So I'm gonna, I'm just going to gather up my ruffle here. And this is, I just pin these so that that's the shoulder like that. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. Woo, there we go. I got a little nerve wracking there. Okay, this is my back. This is the lining. I really don't want to confuse it. We spent so much time matching the plaids. This is such a tiny little piece. Pretty sure I have enough to pleat it. It just depends on, you know, what I want. And I, I had wanted this Oh, this is my alternate piece. So I'm going to pleat it, I think. Let's see, do I want it to be like this or like this? I don't know if it matters. I have a line here and a line here. And then if I pleat it up to the edge there, do I want to pre-pleat it? Probably. Or do I gather it? It's kind of thick, you know? Oh, please explain hang free ruffle. So I could make this ruffle so that, so here's the, um, here's the bodice, right? Here's the yoke right here. So you can see here's the center front. Here's the yoke seam. Here's the armhole, okay? So this could be a ruffle that the end here is clean finished like this, and it hangs free and clear of the placket seam, and same, I could do it hanging free over here as well, right? So then it's like this. Or I can, this is what I'm thinking I'm gonna do, I could make it so that it's fixed in there, like that. And so then the ruffle is still there, but it's fixed into the seam. You know? Hi, Sydney. 
Finish both long games and they're so close to one another. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I like that warmers too. Sydney has a couple of those. So do I do gathers or do I do pleats? I'm such a big fan of pleats, but if I do it, will I be upset if they're not perfect? You know? Like pleats go with like, um, this fabric's kind of heavy. Pleats go with the like the plaid. I like looking at it on the camera screen. Let's see how it goes here. I'm just gonna eyeball pleat it right now. Let's see what I think. I could take this out pretty easily. If you have a, a ruffler attachment on your machine, this would be such a, a great excuse to use it and um, have fun with something, you know? Just make sure it's an actual ruffler, not a gathering foot, because you won't get this effect if you uh, have a gathering foot. Rufflers make um, ruffles like this. Do you remember when I did this to the bottom of a sleeve for that 100 acts of sewing shirt last summer? Um, it was in olive green and it was the dress number one. I put a, I think I put a ribbon around the hem but I ruffled the sleeves. It actually turned out really cute and it really made that dress look just different, you know? So, just the end, not the entire line, yeah. Yeah, it's a little, but you know what I'm thinking? The reason I'm thinking of this is that I, I'm kind of hoping that um, it lays flatter, you know? Yeah, so. Let's see here. What's interesting is you see how these pleats are going this way? If I turn it over, it does the exact same thing. Pleats are so interesting that way. So I was thinking I, I would have them go away from the front and then um, away from the other side. Um, and then this piece might fit across the back. Let's see. I have more here. All right, so let's put this in here. This kind of is a forgiving way to match my plaids as well because that seam's gonna kind of interrupt it. Put one front, let's just do this all at once. <laughs> I can't tell, I can't tell what the shoulder is on this piece. You know? Whew. A whopping five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm fiddly. I'm feeling fiddly. I probably need some pins here. All righty. Five eighths, man. Does anyone else have a problem with five eighths? And it seems it just seems like so much. One, two, three, four layers. Okay, I'm just making sure I got all four layers here. It's kind of hard to see. It's so hard to see.
Rebecca. Nice. You grading? <laughs> exactly. Everyone gets good grades. A good grade for you and a good grade for you. Ooh, Christmas masks. I've been making Halloween masks. They're not that even. They just look like it. Don't put me on a pedestal. <laughs> there we go. All right, so um, here we go. Yeah. What do you guys think? My plaids are kind of not matching. We know how I feel about that. All right, so this one must set aside for now. And here's my other front. And here we go. And there's my other. Okay. I'm actually going to maybe sew this one on. For, isn't this hilarious that I, I just I can't, really can't tell? Okay, so this is. Is this what I did on this one? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I did this. <laughs> okay. That piece is way too symmetrical. I'm just going to tack it this time a little bit. Just a little bit in the seam allowance. Right? Doesn't even match. All right, just like that. And then let's put... I'm going to put uh, pleats going the um, other way on uh, this side. So this is not my strong way. <laughs> I'm a little too high up. It's better to do this closer to the seam line because um, it creates a, a pivot point, you know what I mean? some pins. <laughs> Please have your vote. Nice. Yeah, I like, I love pleats. I love pleats, except when it's by your crazy boss who wants them all to match tartan plaid. Then I don't like pleats. That was a story I told the other day. Cuckoo bosses. I've had plenty of cuckoo bosses working in the garment industry. The rumors are true. They exist. All right, so. Uh, uh, uh what the? Uh, didn't I cut this so that it would kind of match? Why am I so lost on this piece? What the heck? It is this. I'm pretty sure. I'm just done worrying about that. Okay. Oh, this is this is because this is my outer. Never mind. It's already attached. Phew. All right. We're good. We're golden. Okay. So I want this to line up to. All these edges here. It's like I don't sew for a few days and I'm just easily confused, you know? This does feel weird though. Look at that. <laughs> oh, nice Melinda, you got your hemming done? That was your uh, outfit. You're the one making the birthday outfit for your mom, right? I guess it is that time of year where we gotta start planning, you know, holiday gifts if you make them. All right, I'm 
I'm going for this. I think I'm having a little trouble getting my yoke seam to match here, and I don't know why. You see that? I'm going to go by the plaid. How much time do we spend on plaid matching? So much time. Is it gonna match? Fingers crossed. Okay. I don't mind my uh, overall seam being off because of the amount of seam allowance we have. All right, so I'm gonna make sure my pleats are kind of straight down because I didn't really tap them at the seam line. Fronts, backs, rights, and less for the yoke. Yes. You know, Leah, um, you won't have to. Oh, you guys. Mm. I sewed this one on backwards. Oh, my gosh. No wonder. You know, I'm going to blame Rebecca for all this. Every time she's here, I noticed this the other last time. I was like. Wait, the last time Rebecca was here, didn't I make like a really big mistake? You know, when you know when you're in real life friends see you like this, you're like, I promise I'm competent. <laughs> ah, so she can wear her outfit like one more time before it gets cold. That's great. I love I you know, I know the like impetus for making clothes for the season you're about to be in. But um, at the same time, it's so nice to open your drawer next time around the, at the season start and go, oh, I have a new outfit, you know? You were running, <laughs> it's true, I swear. That's so funny, isn't that funny? It's like when your mom's watching you and it's the one time you're like telling an, a weird story from your youth. You know, like say you're with friends at a party or, you know, whatever. And then your, your mom hears it and they're, and they're like, that's not what happened. You know, you assumed I did that all the time. Wow. I see how it is. I see what you think of me. <laughs> But you know what I mean, like, it's like, okay, my mom, I, you know, when this would happen to me, it's like, all the time talking to my friends, never talking about my childhood, never talking about my mom. The one time my mom's there, uh, for weird, some weird reason, you know, it comes up and then you're just like, why? Why did my mom have to hear me telling that story? You know? And then it devolves into embarrassing stories of you that your mom tells, you know? Yeah. The joke's on my mom because I have embarrassing stories of her and she knows it too. She was young when she when she and I were tooling around. Alright, so um you're correct. You were the inside one. You are the outside one. You need to behave. Like literally. You need to behave. See, this one has that right there, but that just doesn't seem. Drink, exactly. Oh, Sydney, yeah. <laughs> Five satchel bags for Christmas. Your, your fam, your, well, what is, maybe your mom can do something else, Sydney. Okay, I, I just need to think about this for a second. All right, so this is, the, you know what's not helping me is the fabric is so hard to discern uh, right and wrong side. So I need to make sure I have my left and my right. 
Now this is my inner, I know this is my inner yoke because I know this is at the top of my outer yoke and see look, the plaid matches, right? All right, so let's tack this on here now. All right. There we go. So I haven't finished my uh, twin duvet that I made with the jelly roll because the fabric I got for the backing, like I asked them at the store, like this will be okay for a duvet back. Yeah. And you know, I think that, you know, when you know, when you're thinking that already, you probably know something's not quite right, you know, and it totally could be fine for a duvet cover, but I honestly think one week in the, it's going to snag on something, you know? So I think I have to buy 10 more yards of fabric and do it again. You know, <laughs> kind of bummed by that. Oh, you got some buttons from Tabitha Sewer. Which ones did you get? All right, we're gonna pin this this time and we're gonna look at it and we're gonna make sure it's correct before we sew it. This is what you call ensure success. That's the inside. That's the outside. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. An hour in and we're uh, still on these yoke scenes. <laughs> Aren't you glad I made the ruffle before we started? All right, I think I'm gonna stitch this. I'm gonna stitch this from this side. Cause this is the, no, I wanna stitch this from this side. Cause this is the right side. And I'm gonna try and get my plaids to match. So I have this hanging off right here. It's a little confusing. So. Hey, Adina, how's it going? <laughs> yes. Does a cat come with every satchel? Because I would like to be on this Christmas exchange list. All right. So I'm matching this. Right. It, I'm sorry, you guys. It's just really, it is a lot to, um, I'm gonna just tack this right here. I'm kind of trying to match the I'm gonna tack you. I'm gonna tack you right there. Like that. Alright, and now I'm going to sew the whole thing. I don't like how far away that looks. It looks kind of far away. I love this when I fold it down that just magically happens. Alright, that's a little better. Hmm? 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 Okay. I'm gonna trim you. I'm not gonna worry about that right there. I am a little worried about that right there. linen man okay I'm gonna top stitch this can you see the linens is like it's kind of a it's kind of a pain it's kind of a being a pain to sew I have some threads here I want to get rid of, but I think I'll do that later. The uneven milky white ones. Oh, I think I did see those. 
Did you buy your buttons with a project in mind? That one looks better. All right, I survived. <laughs> I survived. Did you say I survived? Look at this up here. What is going on with that? I'm gonna look at that later. All right, so we have our front bodice. Now let's fight with the back. I mean, sew the back. Always got to get your fiddly junk done first, though, you know? I did it on... I did it with the... I'm just trying to see what side of the ruffle I show just in case it ends up making a difference, you know? So. You're too long, Gap, he says. It's popping up. Re rearing its, its ugly head. That you, your, your inner cat self is like, it's been too long, we need a cat. Do you guys know anything about bathing cats? Like, do you guys bathe your cats? I, I don't. Um, I don't feel like it's necessary, you know. But one of my cats, he's he's a white cat, and he's not very good at giving himself a bath. Um, and he's a big guy. Well, right now, it's really obvious that he's been laying out in the yard in the dirt and under the house, um, and he is. Um, got ash like all over him it's just like it's on his scalp you know on his skin and um thankfully he doesn't give himself a bath right because he'd be like trying to clean off that ash but he looks gray he looks he looks terrible and it is like when you touch him it you can feel the kind of acidic or whatever that is acidic or tannic or whatever of ash you know um i hope this is long enough yeah, it will be. So I'm kind of toying with the idea of giving him his first bath. I have had this cat for like 15 years. He doesn't take kindly to junk like that. He's a terrible patient. At the vet though, he pretty much goes, he plays possum, like he plays dead. He sits there like a statue. You can just move him around, he just sits there like this. It's really funny. <laughs> But I'm just wondering, like, is this a bad idea? Like, like I say, if I'm wondering it, it's probably a bad idea. So. <laughs> Hopefully no one's allergic to cats, Derek. <laughs> oh, wait, where's my bottom? Front, front. At least I know the uh, right side of the front now because it's got the ruffle, right? All right, here's my uh, back. Lay this on here. I'm going to lay this on here like I did before. I think I'm going to have to unpick this last pleat here so I have seam allowance. Because the, you know, it's folding back underneath. So, 5 eighths inch seam. Well, I don't know. That's kind of a lot, huh? Can I have a pleat there and still have seam allowance yeah let's just put a smaller one it's kind of it's close it's very close because of the pleat at the back here I need to make sure that this goes all the way this corner here needs to go all the way to that edge right. I think sewing ruffles is so satisfying Ooh, I want to take a picture. Can I take a picture of this, you guys? 
Look at that. It looks so good from my perspective. I just love the way it looks. <laughs> the damp washcloth. Mm, that's a good idea. I could at least start with that. So the other funny thing about Haku is as he's getting older, he's getting warty. You know, like he's getting little warts all over him. I know that that it's it kind of cracks me up. Like it doesn't feel great when I'm scratching him. I'm like, oh no, do you have a scab? You know. But um, it's such a like it just feels like such a little old man thing to do. You know, to get warts all over him. I have a Furminator brush, and that you know that gets the downy undercoat and stuff. And I do that on him, and he loves to be br he loves to be brushed. You know, he loves it. He's a definitely a purr. You know, but um. The Furminator brush is, it's, it doesn't, you know, like I'm kind of careful because of the warts. <laughs> so, yeah, right, Michelle? I know, and I don't actually know with him. <laughs> oh, do you have a bathtub lurker, Sydney? Yeah, I've had, I've had cats like that. The ones that are like, what you doing? <laughs> Walking around on the edge. <laughs> okay. So, um, this is the right, the outer one, okay. I think it's actually good to trim this now so that I can see my edge. Because I wasn't doing that on those fronts and it was really throwing off my start point. You know? Alright, here we go. Also, you guys, I need to stop making dresses that are basically like baby dolls. There's, I'm starting to look like a parade float. That's what I said to my husband. I was like, I feel kind of like I look like a parade float all the time. They're kind of high-waisted and kind of um, big. They're comfy, though. I love them. You have two, two lurkers. Yeah. So one, it needs more um, control over their dexterity. A rubber curry comb. Oh, that's an interesting idea. All right, I'm looking at my plaids here. I'm kind of picking up the seam allowance here and seeing it right there. The linen is uh, too forgiving, honestly. Yeah, and I don't think that there's like rumors for that. Like I've I've toyed with asking my vet what they like I might ask my vet what they recommend and if they offer that you know um, I don't really want to put him under for a bath but I am really worried about the ash on him and the and on his skin you know what I mean like it's it's really bad you guys like he is a, a gray cat right now and it's different than dirt ash is like have you ever you know rub ash it's kind of like it's just so insipid you know we're, we're not letting him lay outside as much, but it doesn't matter. It's in the air. And um, even if he just lays on a piece of furniture out there, no matter what, it's really bad. It's everywhere. I have my glass, water glass on the windowsill inside the house yesterday upstairs when I was editing a video. And I was like, what? I just had set my glass down and like, 20 minutes later, into looking at it, I was like, what's floating on my glass? And I think it's ash coming from the windowsill. Oh, yeah, it's in my lungs for sure. All right, so I'm going to try the damp towel. Oh, really, Melinda? She does cats? You live in Yuba City? You're local to me? That's awesome. Do I know you? Sorry if I'm, I'm terrible. I bet Rebecca's laughing. Rebecca's probably like, oh, God, here we go. Jeremy's like, who's that person? <laughs> Do I know them? <laughs> All right. Look at that. It's pretty good. The non-matching plaid bits actually don't bug me. And this is so close to matching right here. That kind of bugs me. I won't see it though. It's on my back. You, I live out in Butte Valley. Yuba City is not that far now for me. Your guys' uh, fire... I get your guys' fire evacuation warnings. 
So I know when you guys are, uh, yeah. Now, um, I have my, uh, oh, that's what I forgot to do. Uh, I need to find the pattern piece. You used to live in Biggs. Yeah, I do. Okay. Oh, from Melinda. Okay. Okay. Melinda. Wait. But you're not, um, qu quilting telegraph. Right? Because you're in Monterey. Quilting telegraphs in Monterey. You're, I'm getting confused. I need my pattern piece because remember we decided we figured out. Um, okay, two inches finished. All right, that's what I need to know. So I did the gathers at the waist, and um, because I'm doing gathers instead of darts right here, um, and they're not going to a, a fixed line, I need to. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Oh, okay, Melinda. Melinda. Melinda, I'm doing that quilt swap. And I saw it in your um, in your stories. And then I saw Moonlight Quilters posting about it, so I'm doing it that white elephant one. So thanks for the inspiration. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hi, Melinda. I didn't know your last name. That's awesome. You're sewing so much. I love it. Wait, butt bath. Wash class, how do I do the butt baths? <laughs> All I saw was butt baths. <laughs> Okay, okay. Looks kind of fringy. Well, it looks kind of fringy. What do you mean fringy? This looks, the plaid looks pretty good on the back here. I mean, this one looks a little crooked, huh? I think the top stitching made it worse. Oh yeah, look at that. Mm. All right, so um, my fronts, I'm gonna use my, um, my clean finish shoulder technique that I have. Oh, actually, I don't even need that technique because I actually have, well, I'm just gonna do it all in one. So if you haven't seen that, uh, how to clean finish a yoke without using the burrito method, um, this, if you only had like a back yoke and the front was a single layer, you could, you know, this, you could use that method, right? Um, I'm still going to use that method. I'm just going to make my whole shoulder fixed. I'm going to trim this wackadoo thing here. You know, so. Oh, it makes it look sort of like fringe. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of tassels. Do you guys like tassels? I'm not a big fan. So I think my for my white elephant quilt swap, I was thinking about making a um, advent calendar, but for anything you want and it'll be like a five day countdown with pockets and it will be like non-seasonal specific. I don't know this idea just popped into my head and I kind of thought that would be kind of fun so like if say you have a birthday in the family or there's an exciting date coming up like someone's graduation you could put up your little birthday or your little advent calendar and put something in five pockets it's just a five day countdown. I just thought it would be kind of a fun little way to do something. So this is how I do it though, the um, clean finish. I just take my yoke and put it right sides together like this. And I think what I'm gonna do to make this easier is I'm gonna sew these together first because my um, front yokes are a little bit kooky because I didn't cut them out very well. So um, I'm gonna put these, I just folded down my back yoke I'm just going to sew these down, make them a little more tame, because they're looking a little funky. I don't think, yeah, I don't think I have any plaid to match the shoulders. Thank goodness. <laughs> hey, Nancy. Yeah, so I think I can handle that, you know? Um, and it's something kind of not just quilty so I don't feel um, that kind of like okay do I do a quilt pattern or something like that and it's something I'm interested in so that always helps you know 
All right, so um, I don't usually pre-sew this doing it, clean finishing it this way, but you could. It's less to manage when you only have three layers, but with the fourth layer and the linen being all higgledy-piggledy, or at least too flexible, and my cutting being all higg higgledy-piggledy there, um, I think that this was a good move to just pre-sew it. It's like kind of like pre-game, you know? Pre-workout. Sewing World's version of pre-workout. I kind of like also that if I sew through all layers, this shoulder seam is fixed. You know what I mean? Like this is all one thing now. It's clean finished. Um, the in other words, I could have just done the fronts to the inner yoke to the inner yoke and the outer yoke to the inner yoke, and that would have been totally fine. You could totally do that. Um, but I kind of like having it uh, fixed because it's a little more stable. You know? Yeah, I think that'll be fun. I just realized today I better look at the deadlines for everything because I got my idea before I even signed up and um, then I realized, oh, there's like, I have to meet some requirements. <laughs> I better pay attention to it. And I think I signed up right before we got evacuated this weekend. Like we didn't get officially evacuated. All right, cool. So now I have my clean finished shoulders there. Um, I can bind this edge now uh, because I'm going to bind it and then the placket is going to go um, afterward. If you're doing the uh, binding with the tie, um, you need to keep going off the edge. So the good news is you don't have to clean finish the little end of your binding here. That's not hard, but I know for people who don't really like sewing binding a whole lot, that might just add another layer or something you're like, ugh, you know? But if you need to keep going, it is, I will admit, a little tricky to sew binding to itself, you know? So where's my, um, here it is. I actually pinned it to my, my bucket. <laughs> I had so many strips of stuff, you know? So, um, if you have those clover clips, not clover clips, um, clover bias makers, uh, hello. I know they're right here. Oh yeah, here, I just couldn't see it because of the silver. It was reflecting. So if you have these, this is one of those times where I would use these things. Um, and you can kind of put it in. This, this isn't the right size. I would need the green one. I, I actually know. <laughs> but then you pull it through. Oh, actually this would work. Never mind, I'm wrong. Um, I think it works better if you do this. If you pin this to the table, put your iron here and pull, and then just check it every once in a while, you know? You could do this, but it gets in the way and it doesn't, it doesn't, you can't pin it through your binding, right? So I would actually, this is one of those times where I would actually use this, pre-iron it all, and then so you, I would sew the binding probably right sides together, even though it's all folded. But then um, when you get to the end, you know, I would then take, you know, leave your tails and then, you know, it's already pre-ironed like this. I would take it away from the machine then iron that again along the middle and then, and, you know, finish sewing. I think I just po really poorly explained that, but I'm hoping you kind of get the gist of it. So. I'm going to just bind this like I usually do. Um, and I start from the inside and go to the outside. And I can just have raw edges on mine because of the placket that I'm going to be doing. Oh gosh, this is, this linen is, it's so open. I know I'm about to run out of bobbin too, so I got to be careful. Right, this is the inside. Oh, I wonder how my neckline clip. I need the center for my my uh, label. I probably should have stay stitched this neckline, but I am gently pulling my binding right now. 
I have one of these in my Maya Soda Stress, and it's off center on the on my back waist. Cause remember, I keep forgetting to put them in, and it is hurting me, man. I finally put the dress by my home sewing machine. I was like, I gotta fix this thing. All right, so I'm kind of gently pulling my binding. Hopefully, that'll compensate for not stay stitching my neckline. I'm actually gonna push my neckline up a little bit. So if you don't do all that clover hoo-ha with the pre-fold and whatever, this is how I would do the tie, too. So I would do this, and then I would let my tie hang off. And then um, I would, you know, trim my neckline, clip it, whatever. You don't need to clip it, really, on this kind. And then I would sew it. I'd probably not back tack right here. But if you really wanted it to be a nice seam, like one long row of stitches, you're going to need to figure out your tie length and then start sewing from the end and then keep going. And then once you get to the neckline, just remember that you don't want this to torque when you get here. Just kind of be careful. All right, I'm going to trim this a little bit. All right. I'm going to hack it with these scissors that are just kind of bad right now. All right, can I ask you guys' opinion about videos? <laughs> about uh, paying for videos. I want your opinions. So um, you guys know that it's been this long drawn out process that I've been doing these bin bin videos, it, mainly because I've had to leave the house a couple times and that just like disrupts my whole life for days, right? Because we gotta like, you know, all that stuff. So they're taking a little longer, plus I like, almost got done with them and I was like you know I think I'm gonna make these separate videos instead of one big video because it was like three hours long and that was without the bonus content so there's gonna be bonus content so I'm thinking there's already a stream on how to sew the bins right I'm thinking I'm gonna charge three dollars for video you can pick whatever video you, you want or you can pick all of them for a bundle for ten dollars you also would get, and Patreon patrons are going to get a discount, so so you know. Um, you would also get a bonus video on how to sew a lid, which turned out really cute. Um, how to clean finish the top edge. This is actually the sample. So, right, you're going to get how to clean finish the top edge, how to sew this lid, which I think are the best bonuses of the whole thing. And then um, how to put on straps, like carrying straps. And that's just kind of like a quick little bonus. So that'll just come with it if you buy any of the videos or the bundle. So I'm just wondering, is that seem like a good deal? Three bucks per and then 10 for a bundle. You can be honest with me. I'm curious. I think I'm going to start doing that a lot so that people don't have to have pay a, for a pattern that has a video. Ooh, I love binding. Dang, my serger was so filthy. I just saw this little chunk fall out from my machine just now. I need to get rid of it because it's kind of oily. It just reminded me. I wish I could get my throat plate off, but I cannot. I tried again. I just can't get it off. I really need to clean under there. Yeah, you think so, Nancy? Okay, look at that. Ooh, I love bias. That looks so cute. Look at that, so cute. 
All right, and it's all clean finished. I didn't even have to do any fringe seams quite yet. All right, so um, I'm going to my little ruler here. I'm gonna put my gathering stitches. Yeah, I mean, I know it's a good price, but would you feel like you, um, it's only for one, like, let me be clear. So one video is one bin style, right? So you get, you can pick, okay, I know I'm pretty much only gonna make collapsible bins in the all fabric. I'm just gonna get the collapsible all fabric bin video. <laughs> and then, um, or maybe you're like, I'll just get one collapsible and one, and, and that's all fabric, and then I'll get the clear front that's non-collapsible, -collapsible, and I can figure it out from there, you know? So then um, you're only paying $6 for two videos, and then you'd get the bonus video as well, which is another 45 minutes, I think. And, um, and the pattern's gonna be updated, include the lid for everybody who's already bought it and anyone who gets it from now. And then I, I know like, Three times four is 12, you know, whatever. I think 10 bucks is fine. So it's my experiment. Um, so I'm just going to see, you know, what I think of that. But I just want to make sure I'm like, I don't know what videos cost. I really don't. And so maybe you guys do. I've been trying to find some, but the things I find, I'm like, huh. Like I found a beginning sewing video for $37 and I was like, okay. All right, so now I'm gonna do my gathers here. I like two rows. I am thinking about making them pleats though. So that's why I started with two rows. This is a huge amount to gather here instead of a dart. And I didn't uh, make my seam length, I don't know if you noticed that, but I didn't change my seam length and I did that on purpose because I, I kind of want them to be close, so. Yeah, but they only get like one of the bin bin styles, you know? And then this way they can buy what they want and what they need, right? Because I think like a three hour video is like, ugh. <laughs> if I bought a video and it was three hours, I'd be like, okay, I gotta set some time to, to watch that, you know? And it'll have, um, okay, I have another thing I need to ask you guys about. But um, it'll also have timestamps that will come with timestamps, but here, here is, um, I know you're teaching that would be about value to me. Now someone I didn't know was selling video. Yeah, exactly, Nancy. Right? I think, um, $3 is a pretty, uh, like, it's not such a risk. So then you can, and they, and there's like tons of my content on YouTube, right? They can see how I am before. So, I totally agree with you. <laughs> no, my daughters even know if we have a DVD player. Okay, so here's my other funny thing. So I, this is the other thing that kind of stopped me in my tracks and kind of delayed the whole thing. I was gonna do things through Teachable and then I was just like, you know what? I don't understand Teachable well enough to know what if something happens and I am not doing this for some reason, like I'm planning on this indefinitely. What happens to all of the people's content that they've bought from me on there, you know? And I'm sure they have an answer for this, but I do find some of their things a little bit kind of like too like wheeling and dealing, like when they talk to, talk to me. So then I was like, you know, I should just delve more into Vimeo. I've been on Vimeo for years. I've used it for lots of how-to videos. I did not realize until a last week that they don't have closed captioning. What the heck? This is a really well-respected professional video platform and they don't have closed captioning. And I was kind of, <laughs> kind of bummed because I think closed captioning is really important for people, for um, hard of hearing, for people who uh, want the reinforcement, for people in another country. I mean, there's a lot of reasons, right, to have subtitles and closed captioning, right? So um, YouTube does that and it's just part of my videos. You can just click it on. It's right now on the screen. You can click it on, you know? 
And so then I was like, all right, now what do I do? I got rid of my Teachable account and I was paying for the plat the version that would give me subtitles and cap closed captions. And then um, I took it away and I went to Vimeo. I can do it. I have to pay for them. And it's this whole thing where I have to like upload my video, then they send me a file and I have to attach it and I have to tell you guys, I'm just like, oh God. So um, then I was like, all right, well YouTube, oh, but Vimeo, I can put bookmarks in the video. So you can literally see a bookmark and go to it, which is really nice. So they don't, yeah, the Michelle, the, so the pattern's separate from the videos. Yeah. Thing. I hope that's what it is, right? Yeah, so then um, then I was like, all right, I'm back to YouTube. YouTube offers it, and I can do private videos. So, um, but I can't do bookmarks or chapters. Right, Adina? I, it's very important to many people. My parents use it, you know? They're not hard of hearing. They just really want that when they're watching TV. Where's my other notch? can't see it that's my center right <laughs> I'm doubting everything what is going on here okay there's my notches I was getting a little nervous there <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I actually uh, feel, why is, that is not, that is not very, this isn't as many gathers, okay. Um, this makes me feel really bad for all of my um, videos I've already released for Chicken Boots Patterns. I didn't realize that they didn't have subtitles. So, or if you want to watch work, exactly, yeah. Yeah, like a lot of times I catch up on the news in bed and um, at night when my husband's asleep, you know, and I really want to watch a video and I can't, you know, because I can't, I'm scared I'm going to click on it, it's going to like blast <laughs> the closed captioning, you know. So anyway, that's my other dilemma right now. So I know this that all sounds kind of boring and kind of like big deal, just upload it to both or whatever. It's, it is kind of a big deal because when I create a video, I have to actually export it into the format of the site it's going to live on. And there's like a ton of options, things I've never even heard of. I didn't know of all these platforms. So um, I need to kind of decide. So right now I'm exporting them for video, for YouTube. I'm going to try it out. I just want one ring to rule them all. You know what I mean? I just want one place for all of everything. That works and YouTube I'm not a big fan of it sorry but I'm not um, and uh, but I know they're gonna be here you know and that's another thing why did you do that come on gathering stitch the heck I, I look at this gathering stitch the heck? oh this is the piece I say okay okay It's so, it's so uh, multi-layered. I've talked a little bit to Andrea from Sew to Fit about it too. And she has so, such a tremendous amount of knowledge surrounding this because she did videos on Periscope for a really long time. And she said, I know it's kind of a, um, a little bit, I don't know what she said, like clunky, but it worked really good for what I needed it for and what people used it for. So it had its place. But, you know, she doesn't probably have that archive. And that's another thing, like having the archive. Plus, like, I don't understand, like, do any of you have private videos that you have access to on, on YouTube? Does that just live in your library? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting to me, right, too. Um, but I notice, like, um, like, what I'm interested in is usually something I'm trying to learn about, you know? So, like, it's kind of funny, like... Like everyone follows me on Instagram for sewing stuff and that's not, that's interesting to me. I like seeing what people make, but it's not like, that's not what really drives me right now. I want to know more about this kind of thing. So, um, the sewing report gal, she just did a video 
and posted it, I think, last Saturday. And I can't wait to watch it. And then the next day we lost our power, and then we were at my parents' house. So I haven't had a chance to watch it, but I'm really eager. And it's about sponsorships and revenue being on YouTube. And I was like, oh, this is the kind of stuff I'm really interested in. And so um, I'm kind of excited to watch that. So they, they were both two inches front and back. Is that really what I did, you guys? That better be near my boobs. I know we've draped it, right? I gotta trust it. Okay. All right, so that's what I have. And I'm gonna fix this now. I'm gonna pull all this. So the reason I'm fixing my gathers like this is because normally you would be sewing these into a seam that um, you would know like, oh, okay, I this whole thing has to fit into that seam. But the seam I'm, I'm sewing this into has a section of this as well. So I'm gonna fix them both and then, and if I don't, what happens is like my dress could get too big or too small if I don't pay attention to what I'm sewing in. Look at that. That looks like it's at an angle. It is at an angle. So remember how focused I was on not having, like, I didn't want a plus sign right here, like a target right here. <laughs> and um, I didn't want this that plus sign to be right here. But then look what I ended up with. <laughs> It'll be okay, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right, Nancy? I know. She is really great. I, I'm new to her. Like, I've only been, like, uh, checking her out for the last, like, year. But, yeah, and I like her editing and stuff. She puts some good effort into her videos. I saw, like, Aja, Aja, Bar or, uh, Aja? Aja Barber talking about, like, people recommending her go on, on YouTube and she's like, y'all, I don't want to deal with YouTube's com comment sections. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, I know that it could bring me ad revenue. And I was like, oh, hold up. Like you're a much bigger draw than me and you would do really good on there financially probably. But if you ever want to see what the back end looks like, you just let, you know, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like, you know. She's like, yeah, that's about what I expected. I'm like, yeah, it's complicated you know it's a new channel to you yeah sewing report yeah so I think it's called the sewing report and she's on Instagram as well today she posted one on um, which sounds kind of interesting um, she goes to a dry cleaning supply for some of her sewing supplies because it's really affordable so some of you might like that kind of information as well. It is a really s a smart way to go about it because you probably don't have to be wholesale or dry cleaner to be able to shop on there. Because I could give you like the places I go for some of my pattern drafting stuff, but you do um, have to, for some of them, you have to have a resale thing. But like Comar in LA, you don't. I'm pretty, you probably have to have a, a license, but you don't have to. Like, it's not wholesale. You're not reselling that stuff, you know? All right, last one. And then we're going to work on our sleeves. Kind of just trying to make these symmetrical here. This is rare. I don't, ra rarely get to do this like where I fix the gathers in like this and then cut my threads. It does kind of commit me, but it's not the end of the world if I need to change it. I can change it. And at the end today, I'm going to put this on my dress form to see what we think. I brought it over here. All right. All right, so I'm going to do my... Um, side seams here and we'll put in our sleeve with fringe seams just 
Okay, stop growing. Look at this thing is on the bias. You can see it. I'm going to ease it in a little bit. Yeah, you're ready for later. Nice. Yeah, I don't think she does lives, but she does uploaded, uploaded things. All right, let's go to the iron. Let me get a drink real quick. Why does it look weird today? <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. Oh, nice, Allison. Which jeans are you going to make? So what do we think of this? It's not too bad, huh? <laughs> it looks weird because you're here. What do you mean? Oh, she has more than one channel? Oh, I didn't know that. Nice straight seam there. You love to see it. Yeah, she seems really knowledgeable. She's kind of like a goal, like, I don't know about she's a goal, but I like that she's exists mostly on YouTube. I love Instagram. It's my first thing I open up, but it's just not where I want to be. Um, that's not where my content is. You know what I mean? There's a, tons of people doing lives and uh, creating their content on there. Um, and I'm not. So it's probably not the best platform for me to find uh, people who need sewing help all the time. You know? They can find it on there. All right. So... I gotta sew this quick before it unravels anymore. Okay, so Ray, I have a new video game for you to watch. <laughs> I started playing this game called Cuphead. It came out for PC last year, I think. And I watched a little bit, but it wasn't on PlayStation. Um, and I don't play games on my PC, even though both of my PCs here are actually gaming PCs. I don't. Uh, it's a slippery slope, you know. So, um, but Cuphead is a video game that was designed um, completely in, with um, authentic 1930s animation. And the music is also, it's, it's so fun. It's ha really hard. And I kind of was like, when it came to PlayStation, I was like, oh, I know this game's really hard. 
So it's, they call that a platformer, a run and gun platformer. So mainly your character runs across the screen, you shoot things and you avoid things and you get to the end, right? The whole, like each level, maybe if you got all the way through is like a minute and a half, but I've literally spent three hours trying to beat each one. I'm not very far into the game. But just the music and um, the animation is so unique, and it's it's really amazing. It's really fun to watch that watch it. So, oh, you're making the Dom jeans. Um, did I make those? I've made oh, I made the Morgans, which are non-stretch, but they're button fly. I've made the Ginger, the Ash, the Mountain View, which are pull on. Right? That's it. I don't think I've made the Dawn. Sorry. But those are by, um, um, you let, yeah, I know it's hard, right, Allison? Yeah, Cuphead. Yeah. It's pretty fun, though. I have, like, I have people on my friends list on PlayStation that I'd hardly talk to messaging me, asking me to stream so they can watch a bit of it because they want to, they're, like, trying to decide if they get the game. And I can't stream at my house anymore. I don't stream games, you guys, but occasionally I will for a friend and, like, they're the only person watching, you know? What the heck? Why is this? Oh, it's because of that. So like, yeah, it's called Cuphead, and his little companion's called Mugman. Like, he, his head is a cup. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, it's a PC game. You should check it out, Nancy. It's really cute. 1930s animation, and, like, the music and everything. Like, literally, you guys, it looks, like, scratchy, and, um, yeah, just watch a snippet of it, and you'll, you'll see what I mean. It's fun. Like, I was battling these two frogs for the longest time the other night. <laughs> they were throwing things at me. <laughs> right now I'm trying to get through this uh, tree house and there's a woodpecker. Oh, it's Megan Nielsen. Oh, it's Megan Nielsen? The Dawn jeans? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I think it's on Steam, Nancy. Look at you. You know more than I do. All right, so here we have our side seams ready to go. Why do I feel like I just did this on the wrong side of these? Wait, 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 wait. I did those correctly. Why is this one not correct? What the heck? Hmm. I even checked. What the heck? I'm too distracted, I guess. I got the frogs finally. I figured out that um, at this one section of the game, I thought you couldn't, the, the frogs turn into a cash register. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I thought at that point you couldn't damage them, so I stopped shooting them. And I kept thinking like, when am I gonna beat this? I was so good at it, and I, but I would always die there. You only have three HP, like three health, you know, like three lives. So it, and it's very unforgiving. And so um, then I figured out, I'm like, oh, they're taking damage, but you don't see the damage bar anymore. And then I beat it like immediately on my next playthrough. I was like, okay. So yeah, now I'm in this little tree house. Yeah, Fall Guys is cute. I haven't been playing that one just because uh, people have gotten really good at it and it's just not as fun now. <laughs> I don't play it enough to be good. I didn't even notice this at the iron that this was wrong. I'm still in doubt here. Yeah, I did that right sides together there. Oh, well. You want this linen not having a right and wrong side? It's probably a good idea for me, especially since I'm streaming and I'm a little more distracted. Hey, Daphne, how's it going? Um, I should have probably at least put sticky notes so that it was just a constant reminder on one side. Oh, this is the right side. Oh, this is the right side. Or the outer you know? <laughs> Melinda's like, what are you talking about? Melinda's all, I play Animal Crossing. I bet she plays Animal Crossing. 
She's like, that's what I was doing. I wasn't even in the stream. It's not my fault that you sewed that wrong. Eh. Um, what are you up to, Daphne? Nice to see you. Okay. Always happens when I start talking about video games, huh? But it was all said and done by the time I got the iron on that one. I kind of want to stitch down that French seam. Like, uh, top stitch it to the bodice, you know? Alright. kind of good that one of these is not on the bias to kind of stabilize it. I really don't have room now. I can't really trim, so I gotta, I gotta be really careful here. I knew you'd play Animal Crossing. I may have known that. You, what's really funny is Melinda once mo messaged me on Instagram and she, and she, cause she must have seen that I liked someone's Post and she's like, you like this person too? And she's the she's an actress in one of my all time favorite games. Um, that I loved that we had that connection, and then then we could talk. I was like, okay, so how did you get to her? Um, and you know what's really funny is the gal who plays her counterpart in um, The Last of Us, Dina. She has a Twitch channel now, Shannon Woodward, and I didn't realize she was in Raising Hope, which I love that show, and um, Westworld. You just never know, you know? <laughs> oh, pins and stickers be ironed by accident. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you on that. I never did start that uh, critical role from the beginning, Melinda. I, I, I don't think I have enough internet at home to do that. I would be gobbling it up, you know, because it's stream. I know I can probably um, download it here, so. You're playing bingo plus. <laughs> Yeah, see a safety pin. That that would that would be great. Or just a clover clip. My clover clips tend to fall off sometimes though, you know. Let's see if I got this in here. I think I have a few threads kind of peeking out here. Let's see. Oh, not too bad. Just this one here. I was careful when I pull these. I want to make sure it's going with the seam and not across the fabric, you know. Okay, so now we're good. All right. Phew. I don't know. Look at that, Sydney. I, I do have these big things right here at the front. We'll see. All right, let's do our sleeves. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the underarms. Um, and this is kind of my spot to I actually I'm really hoping my sleeve fits because I didn't technically check I measured it but I didn't really measure it um so I'm hoping my sleeve fits this armhole that is the one of the gambles I have today all right so this one is my front and that one's my front so I'm going to so I need a left and a right so this is my part where I say why I sew in my sleeve separately um, rather than sew. So basically I sew my underarms first, my side seams first, and then I set the sleeve in. I know I always get someone that maybe comments like on, on one of my uploaded streams, you should do it a different way where you put the sleeve to the armhole and then do the underarm and the side seam all in one. I don't prefer that. The sleeve functions better if you don't do it that way. It is easier. Technically, it seems easier to sew it in, and I can see that. But um, I'm up for the challenge. So I do it this way. 
because I like the way the sleeve functions better. I'm a huge fan of set-in sleeves. <clears throat> I see people have fit issues, and I know it's because not using set-in sleeves. You know, it's like you can't get around the fit of that, you know? There's quite a lot of it, yeah. I like that they replay those on Fridays, so sometimes they have it on, even have no idea what's going on. So if anyone's a Dungeons and da Dragons fan, there is that on Twitch. And this one's pretty entertaining. So I used my sleeve block for this. It's not the puffy sleeve. Puffy sleeve will be easier to sew in uh, because of the um, gathers. Doing all those gathers with a French seam though, that would be kind of tricky. Uh, you would probably be better off binding the seam if you don't have a serger. Because this sleeve, the way it comes to you is very, very voluminous. And um, doing a French seam with that many gathers, I think you're going to have a struggle unless you have a really big seam allowance, which might be a little too boardy. If you really want your gathers to stick up, you know, like the sleeve cap to really stick up, um, that might help that. But I, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> what do you think now, Allison? Do you think it's still scary? Are you just like, oh, this isn't so bad now? I used to do it the other way, you know? And there's times where I do on knits. Even though I really don't like the way that looks, you know? But you don't need the same functionality from your sleeve when it's in a knit. You still need the same functionality, but you don't have the same constraints because it's in a knit. That's the proper way to say that. All right. So this is my left sleeve. This is my left side. I'm going to put this wrong sides together. Oh, let me put my ease stitch in now. <clears throat> I think I, I think I'm going to need some. I think I, I'm gonna make this a little bigger. I'm gonna do a half inch seam on my sleeve. Am I? I don't know. I don't think I saw that. I don't think I have enough to do, enough seam allowance to do that. I, when I made the video on how to do a set-in sleeve, I put the bobbin a different color than the top thread, I'm pretty sure. And that was so handy. I was like, oh, I should do this all the time for myself just because I like removing the basting thread, this thread right here, once I'm done sewing it. You don't have to. I just like to. And um, it was so easy to identify it, you know? I think that there's less ease in this one, but I'm not sure. All right, so wrong sides together. Left sleeve is this one. Wrong sides. Oh, oh, oh. Thankfully, I can't mess that up because I start at the bottom. One thing I'm getting better at is when I start this seam right here, I always start like at a right angle and I start too far back. I need to kind of start close to the armhole and then come around because what happens is when I come around my armhole, this little start seam is sticking straight out. I would have to end up picking up some of those stitches. The linen's pretty flat, so I think I'm actually gonna push them both the same way. But if yours is really bulky, I would push your sleeve forward and your side seam back. It's actually kind of nice. I'm gonna do that. That's how I'm gonna do it this time. It's kind of offset the seam allowances there. Um, I'm gonna pin a few because I wanna see how my armhole compares to this armhole since I used my block. And I didn't 
technically check it very good. I already put the gathers in there, so let's just see. Oh yeah, we're fine. No problem. I find that I can actually just put the gathers in there and it's almost about what I need. I, I don't know if it's just, I've done a bunch. I don't really feel like I'm like, oh, that's about enough. I just kind of put the gathers in there and it's usually about enough. You can always take them out. And I would slide into the cap too. So my video doesn't show how to do it as a French seam. But it's kind of the same exact thing. I'm just going to use a really narrow seam allowance here. And um, like less than a quarter of an inch or a quarter of an inch or so. Uh, I don't think my notch is going to match this shoulder. It's one thing I do know. Um, yes, Ray. You absolutely can tell the difference because... Um, most likely, the tell would be that they didn't line up the um, seam. When I'm done, I'll show you. I'll show you what to look for. Most ready to wear are not set in. Even if it's a set in sleeve, they don't set it in. They do it the easy way. Look at all these yoke layers here. Where's my ruffle? It's in there, right? Yeah. I should have probably stitched my ruffle to the seam allowance so that I knew I was catching it. I'm not like letting my ruffle hang free, so that's why. I pulled my basting thread here to the inside so I don't catch it on the seam right now. I don't really want to because I want it to hang free. That way I can um, pull it out later on. See, here's my ruffle right here. We'll put that like that so we know we catch it. I put most of my fullness at the top here. I, I You can use pins. Uh, pl please use pins if you want. Uh, if you have a, a shoulder notch, you're going to match your shoulder notch. Mine doesn't because I used a different sleeve to this armhole. So I'm kind of eyeballing that because I didn't spend a lot of time hammering that out. So. Yeah, exactly, Leia. Well, and that's, you know, that is, it's a nicer sleeve. Plus, they, a lot of vintage patterns, there was a lot of undergarments being worn. Why does this feel so thick right here? Is this just my ruffle? Is that... That's my ruffle, I guess so. Wow, it's a seam allowance of my ruffle. Um, and um, there, that fitted look was just very, that was just how people wore things. But like dolman sleeves had a lot of popularity. I do not like dolman sleeves. Um, but they, they are very popular to this day. People really love them. I just don't like wearing things like, like that's too, uh, I just, it's not comfortable. All right, so you can see right here, my notch, where is it? Here we go. See how my notch was notched pretty deep right there and, it, and I sewed over it. That's okay because this is a French seam. This whole thing's gonna get enclosed. So even if you had to go through your notch and part of your notch is hanging out past your seam, that's okay on a French seam because maybe you didn't realize you were gonna do French seams when you cut this out and you did come deep notches, if, you're, if you notch like I do, you know, but that's okay, it ends up being fine. It's not the end of the world. So don't, don't beat yourself up if you do that. Um, all right, so I'm gonna leave this. I'm gonna sew my other one, then we'll iron them and trim them. Oh, so Ray, so you see how, like let's pretend my sleeve's done right now and these seams are on the inside. Right here, you have a smooth line at the underarm. Whereas if this were sewn, um, this under seam, underarm seam wasn't sewn yet, and you sewed the sleeve to the bodice, this would be the smooth seam you'd see. You know, right, right here. You'd see this seam right here 
a nice line that's nice and continuous without the interruption. And it's kind of hard to tell because I have it, it's a fringe seam and I have this kind of dual duality going on here. But in a, um, a continuous underarm seam the other way, what would be misaligned would be these two seams might be like this, right? Because they were sewn first. Sewing it the way I do it, the thing that may be misaligned is this seam. It might be like this, with the underarm and the sleeve. Yeah, there's too much fabric under the arm of the only. I think it has its place. It's just not my place. <laughs> I think also like um, maybe it's being busty that I just don't like a lot of extra in this whole fit this area up here. I like things to stay stay put where I place them. All right. And I also don't like garments that do this, like for the quote unquote kimono sleeve where um, there's just a seam here and here, no seam there. You lose all the shoulder slope and then this is what happens. Your dress chokes you constantly. <laughs> I hate that. And there's no way to get around it. People have tried to be clever and be like, but mine won't be like that. It'll be like that. You cannot get around it. That is the nature of losing your shoulder slope. And then if you put a slope here, what happens is you can't lift your arm up or the whole garment comes up or the shoulders do this when you lift up your sleeve. I could go on and on about this just because um, I think I just like, I like set in sleeves. I just something, oh, I didn't put my, I didn't put in my basting stitch. Sorry. <laughs> so put in your basting stitch for a, a French seam set in sleeve in the same place you would for a regular one. Just put it really close to that seam line, gather it up. I don't usually make my stitch length any longer because I'm not actually adding gathers gathers, you know, like on a skirt or something like that. I'm just trying to tighten up the armhole of the sleeve, just the cap of the sleeve. And this is how I'm doing it. So I'm basically taking whatever ease they added to the sleeve because you need the ease going across right here. I just need to get it into the seam. So I tighten up the seam here and I just put in these gathers that aren't gonna be gathered through the seam line. They're only gathered on either side of it. It just kind of tightens up the fabric. It's almost like the equivalent of someone ironing uh, something wool in one spot and it tightens it up right there, you know, and they're like, oh, whoops. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ray. And that's why I like the set in because because you have your separate sleeve in your body and then they can move like this. Whereas when you put that underarm seam as one, it just creates this tightness, this long line of a tightness in your underarm that can just change the fit a little bit. It's not a big deal. Like it's definitely one of those things where you're being really picky, you know? But it is a nicer, um, it's nicer sewing if you set the sleeve in. If you ever had a home ec teacher, they wouldn't have let you not do it that way. I say that only because most home ec teachers are of an era. <laughs> Accidental felting. Anyone done that before? <laughs> I have just because I've been a knitter for so long. <laughs> I've definitely accidentally felted things. And all my little hand knit sweaters, they are, they're all like felted under the arms, you know, right here, just from moisture and um, wear. It's kind of cute, I think. I need to make sure I got my ruffle in the other sleeve the way I want it. So all these little gathers here, I just stitch right over those. This is the first seam of your fringe seam. It is not the last one, the one that's gonna show to the world. So even though I'm stitching through this ruffle, 
of the sleeve. That's not going to show on the outside of the garment because when I finish sewing this, I'm going to sew right on this line of the, the basting stitch here, the gathering stitch or the set and sleeve stitch or whatever, and it will um, be on the smooth part of it. I didn't make sure that I had the right gathers here. So, hi Summer. Welcome back. Nice to see you. Okay. You always want to do this on the sleeve side. No matter when, you, what kind of sleeve you're sewing, always do it on the side of the sleeve. Don't sew from the bodice, the armhole side. Sew it from the sleeve. And I, I always sleeve, sew with my garment inside out from the inside, or whatever, you, whatever this is to you as far as inside out, right side out. I just mean I sew in the inside of the circle because I have a flat bed here. I don't have a free arm. You have a free arm, you don't have to do it this way. Okay, I need to try and smooth out this, my funky cutting over here. All right, so let's see how my ruffle, I got, I got it in there. Yeah, 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 that armhole is, <laughs> armhole's a little jiggity jaggedy on the cutting thing, okay, okay, so I'm gonna trim this up, and then we're gonna iron it, and then we're gonna do our last seam, so same thing, you just treat this just like a French seam, so I'm gonna trim this down, try and do this right before you're sewing it, so if you're kind of like, whew, okay, I got that in there, and I need a break, um, don't trim it yet. Trim it right before you're going to sew it, just so that these threads don't start getting away from you. Most likely, they're they're going to be fine because um, most of the sleeve is at some point or another is on the bias. You know, it's not going to get thready. But there are aspects to uh, the other parts of your armhole that aren't, and they can get a little threadier. So I say do fresh cut and then you sew. You know, because if your cat comes, takes a nap on it, or makes some biscuits on it, or bread, or whatever you call it, uh, it might start getting thready again. I'm going to cut this little bit of the seam allowance here a little bit the narrower. So. <laughs> I'm making a, yes, I'm making sagebrush top by Friday Pattern Company but yeah I did kind of I wanted to make it into a dress but then I really did go kind of down a rabbit hole of hacking I got it onto my dress form and I also started realizing like oh okay this is sewn a little different than I thought so it kind of made me change a little bit and then I also made it in this gigantic plaid uh, so that also affected a few things so my top now will look like, like this, and it's got a bias placket, and it's got ruffles here. Um, I'm doing a smooth, plain sleeve, where the pattern has this amazing puffy sleeve with elastic hem, and I'm adding a ruffle here at the bottom. The sagebrush top, it's by Friday Pattern Company, and it looks, it looks kind of like this. If you, you know, if the gathers are actually here under the ruffle, there's no placket and it ties in the back and it has a big puppy sleeve. So I cut it out or I mean, I, I did the pattern work mostly last Saturday and then a couple days ago I cut it out. I finished some of the pattern drafting and then I cut it out and it, that was kind of an epic stream because matching the plaid was kind of a, a lot, it took a while basically cutting out each piece. So I think I am kind of excited. At first I was like, Ooh, I don't know. Did I actually kind of go down the wrong way? Is the plaid going to be too much? But I'm, I'm liking where it's at right now. So I'm, I'm doing French seams and I'm setting in my sleeves right now. I think I just clipped my basting thread. I'm just trying not to cut my dress right now. To be perfectly honest. So this right here, 
this, look, this is like a little bump right there, so I'm kind of hoping I'm, I need to kind of smooth that out a, just a little bit. I can't tell. Oh, it's a full. It's a pleat. Okay, I think I'm going to leave that. I think that'll be fine. Smooth this out right here. I hate it when I hear someone pull up out there on a Saturday. I'm always like, who's here? <laughs> what are you doing here? And I, when I pulled up today, there was a woman in the parking lot up out front, like at the, at the street. And she was looking at me like, what are you doing here? And I was like, what are you doing here? <laughs> we didn't talk at all. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> all right. I'm going to iron this. Oh, here, I'll show you summer and what it looks like so far. So I ended up also, at the last second, I pleated my ruffles here. That's what it's looking like so far. All right. Oh, hey, where's my salami? Here it is. Okay, so gonna. This is a French seam, so just don't don't like let the nature of it being a set in sleeve scare you. Just do your thing, you know. It's just a little more awkward. So I'm gonna press this. I like to press the seam allowance one direction. I say this all the time, but this is why I do that. Um, I press it one direction so that when I pr fold it along this edge here, it folds easier. This is pretty thick right here. Oof. This is going to be kind of a nail biter for the thickness. seam edge thanks Adina yeah I, I like this fabric I when I saw it I was like okay I am getting that fabric ow 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 and um I I think either the sagebrush top came out the day like right around the time I bought this and then I started thinking, or maybe like when this arrived, the sagebrush top came out. I had just made the um, other Friday product pattern company, the Sunday V-neck. What, what is this feeling over here? Oh, there it is. Okay. And um, I started thinking about it as the sagebrush top, and I was like, ooh. Don't burn my fingers, man. right on this edge I don't really need my ham quite yet or the salami this just kind of helps when you go because you don't want this seam to do this see how see how it's rolling you want that seam to be right on the edge so just try and do your best like this with the ruffle it might look um, a little wavy when I go to sew it a home sewing machine might protest a little bit at some of these thicknesses. You could always leave the ruffle hanging free and sew the end so that it's clean finished and not put it in the seam at all. You see like this one wants to push back. It's pretty thick right there. Let's see what's going on on the other side. See yeah it's the ruffle. So we'll trim this down further before we go to sew it in there. All right, let's do this side here. I feel like I need my that little glove that came with the wand I've never used for doing my hair <laughs> when I do stuff. Some of these, some of this uh, ironing.
does make it a little easier. So I'm just pressing it. It doesn't matter what way. And you can do it from either side. Like from the raw edge side or this side. You can see I canted my seam allowances away from each other. Linen is so, like the linen is drapey. Um, and it feels like, it feels really thin and light. But there is something about linen that's pretty meaty. And it can feel kind of thick, you know. It's almost like the layers add up quickly with linen, you know. So after I sew this, I'm gonna put it on my dress form. And then on Wednesday, I'm gonna sew part two with the skirt, pockets, and that ruffle that I need to figure out still. And you can see I have some of these gathers in that seam. I don't think you can see that. That's okay. It's my last it's my last seam that matters the most for doing the French seam. These thicknesses are making it kind of hard to keep my seam allowance uh even. I imagine it'll be like that when I sew it too. I'll probably trim those really thick areas a little more than the other areas. But really, got me. Okay. Oh, the blue finger. That's smart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like if you do that clover bias maker, I would definitely protect your fingers. That's the one thing I don't think people talk about enough is how how uh, hot that can get. Let's use my wicked little scissors to get in here. Okay, so this is, where's my seam? That's my seam. That's my seam. Okay, so I'm just gonna trim a little bit here. Got a little close there. Ah, once you start start cutting, it's like, ah, get away. A little nerve wracking. It's like get everything ready. I'm like, hey, okay, I, I need some space. <laughs> okay. You there. You there. You there. All right. On the other side. This is the part I edit out of the videos. Oh, 
Oh, I got my um, raincoat fabric uh, swatch set, but it's not it's not the uh, same as the list they gave me. So I'm a little confused because I was looking for a specific fabric, and that's why I got the swatch set. And then the, the specific fabric wasn't in that swatch set. So I was like, oh, shoot. So um, I haven't decided on my fabric yet. And I emailed them. <laughs> I'm getting a little too close there. It's like when you're cutting dough and you start going and you're like, oh God, this isn't where I want to cut this. And you got to like get it back on track. You can't just keep kneading the dough. You know what I mean? These scissors, man. These are what I'm bringing, bringing to a back alley gunfight. These little scissors. That and my phone so I can call 911. <laughs> I know I'm cutting this down pretty low. You don't have to. It's just because of those thicknesses. That's all. All right. So you still have this um, gathering stitch. And we're still going to sew on the sleeve side. I'm still going to start at the bottom. But you're just doing the exact same seam again. And you want to enclose those raw edges. Trying to get that to stay up there better. You want to try and get the um, you want to try and get these seams to stack on top of each other because they they will kind of pull apart from each other. You can see this one's going this way and that one's going that way. So you know, kind of slide it there. If you like, since I offset mine, it, it's uh, that's why I'm gonna, I can slide it like that. And then you want to try and uh, feel that edge that we were just trimming on. I want to get this as close on the like edge as possible and then feel that um, seam allowance. Now, that trimmed seam allowance. Now, just because I trimmed it that narrow doesn't mean I want to sew that narrow. You still need to take up your whole seam allowance. So if your whole seam allowance was 5 eighths and you sewed your first pass at a quarter inch, even if you trimmed it down to an eighth, you still need to sew this at 3 eighths of an inch from that seam line there. That's what it's measuring from. Don't worry about the what you trimmed. That's not in the picture anymore. It's it's in the seam allowance, right? So you want to focus on your seam allowance still being accurate, especially because um, that helps get your sleeve eased in there because it was designed for that seam allowance, you know? Um, and I actually funnily find that um, sewing a French seam set in sleeve is easier than a regular one because you've pre-sewed it. It it just kind of wants to pay like go right where you want it. This is really thick where this ruffle is. I can feel it. It'll sew it. It's just um, I'm hoping that I don't get it kind of wonky, you know. I'm kind of pulling this away, smoothing down the little section that I'm on right now. You see, did you see that little bump? I always get this. There's, I get this little bump right here from the underside. And so I always like pull the underside out, smooth this curve here, and then join it back up where we started. So there we go. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so let's see how it looks before I pull out my basting thread. There we go. It's totally smooth. Got our set in sleeve. The ruffle looks pretty good there. That's how this one looks. That looks good. I got my seam matched up right there. So, so Ray, if um, <clears throat> one of the ways you could have told the way that I sewed this in this way is if these two seams were kind of off from each other. You know, if this one was over here and this one was over here. Plaid kind of 
makes it hard to see. But the focus looks really bad today. Let's see if I can get it better. The autofocus on. Slow down. And then I turn it off. I help. All right. So now we have our other side. So um, I'm I'm not trying to say that it's easier to do this um, just to be provocative. I actually do think it's easier because you don't have to sew your first pass quite that accurate, right? You just need to get it on. You know, this is um, this little seam here is like mine was a quarter of an inch, right? I can sew through the gathers, so you have those that allowances. The rest of the seam, it, it lines up and it's all fine. And so because of that, it's just so much easier to do this next part. Just keep your underside, you know, smooth. This edge on the edge. Press and trim and do all that hoo-ha. This one's a little tighter. Going just to the left of the basting stitch that I put in so that it's in the seam allowance. And you, like I said, you don't have to remove it, but um, if you put it in the seam allowance, you guarantee you don't have to remove it. But if you get a little wobbly and you go onto the right side of it, you're going to have to remove it because it will show on the outside, right? I think like, I, maybe it's in my head, but I feel like the um, when I remove the basting stitch, it kind of relaxes it even further. And it um, doesn't, like if I have any tucks that are threatening, it kind of helps. So one thing I feel like the best thing to do is to pull from the underside of your sleeve because that way your tail is on this side. And you can see I didn't do that on this one, so I gotta kind of find the tail and hope I didn't cut it. And it's in my seam allowance, so I may just leave this one. Because I can't just pull from this side, it'll just lock up. <laughs> so it's on the other side. So let's see if my other one I can pull out. It's so satisfying to do that. But sometimes I do that. I'll accidentally pull from the right side of the sleeve. And so see my thread tails on the other side. So I'm just going to leave it. It's fine. I can always unpick it with a seam allowance later. Or with a seam ripper and that will be fine. Alright, so now we have our sleeve. Now I'm still debating on whether I'm going to do anything to the bottom of this sleeve. All right, so should we try it on the, the dress form? It's a pretty close fitting sleeve. Let's see. Well, that was a good solution. I actually got the other side all set up and then I was like, oh, I can just put my dress form over here. <laughs> Put your seam allowance towards the sleeve always. It is really rare you don't push your seam allowance toward the sleeve. I think I do it when I do a, a flat felled seam is the only time. Because then I top stitch it down to the, um, to the bodice or the body of the sleeve. I just kind of like the way it looks. I feel like I could uh, gather this more right here. Or maybe it's just the right side. All right, I'll show you guys here. It's a little overexposed.
Pretty cute though. So I think this side, I think I could pull a little bit more. Back looks really good. Sleeve hangs really nice. There is a thing about pulling. Oh, right, Ray. I they do that. They say that because um, um, so you remember. You're making some leggings. Nice. Looks like mummy wrappings. Oh, that'll be cute. <laughs> you don't have a leggings pattern. I thought you had like a jolly one. Is that you? All right. So this is pretty. I like the pleats a lot. And then it'll have the um, bias placket down and then the, the skirt. So this is pretty good. I have a feeling I'm, I don't know, maybe I won't want to gather that more. I don't need a tight dress, you know. Yay. Yeah, I feel like you just gotta figure out how to do it the way you'll like it. What do you think of my ruffles not even being even? I think it's kind of fine, honestly. You know? What I like about them being ruffles is they're flat. Easier also when it comes out of the laundry to iron it. <laughs> if I need to. <laughs> cool. Well, that was fun. I mean, except for when I was failing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I guess I can leave it. I don't have to change up the machine. All right, so I will be finishing this on Wednesday. I have my skirts all ready to go, pockets ready. Uh, I'm gonna check my ruffle. I can, what I can do is measure the edge of this ruffle, measure this length and see what ratio I used to see if I have enough for the skirt. But I do need to figure out how I'm going to put the ruffle on there. I don't have one yet, Summer. Are you interested in something like that? I have, I recorded a whole beginning sewing video and I haven't edited it or put it together yet. So um, uh, there's a bunch of people that are interested in doing Zoom. I honestly don't know how to do it. Um, and so I just need to figure that out. So like, cause I feel like there's a few different ways to go. You could do a Zoom class where it's like interactive with the instructor and what I think what I would do so that um, it's accessible to more people time-wise is I would do a uploaded beginning video and then have, um, we'd have Zoom meetups surrounding it. So, <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> um, hi Meg, uh, this is the Charlie Captain. I just put the inset panel, this right here. I put it on the back too. So uh, it had some interest back there. I do feel a little bit of a parade float in this. <laughs> I'm working on those, Summer. I have um, just tons of videos, that's all, so far. Oh yeah, Rebecca, I just don't want to burden you. I know how busy you are, and I know how much work you have, and um, I also know how much I value my expertise to just be like handing it out for free. So I just wanted to respect, respect your time, you know? So I don't know what I can offer in return. So, but I would be up for that. I would love to know the best way to go about it. You know, what I want to do is have meetups for just social meetups for zoom. And then I would really like to figure out the online course thing. So 
Those are my two things that I want to do. <laughs> so Summer, I do have a Facebook group. So the So So Soists. Ray, stop it. Very predictable. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. You're a peach. You're a fig. <laughs> I know she loves figs. <laughs> You're a fig. That'd be awesome, Rebecca. <laughs> That's awesome, Nancy. Yeah, you're not entering in the county fair. We used to always say that, right? She won't notice. Yeah. I like those little baubles on things that people give me. People don't make me things because they say, oh, I, like when they do, they apologize. And then I'm like, I love it. I love, I have mistakes in all my junk. You guys see it? So, um, yeah. Yeah, so Summer, I was saying, there's a, I have a Facebook group um, that you can just ask to join. You may be in there already called the So, so Soists, I think. And um, you could post questions in there. And if I don't see it, someone will see it. You can put pictures and it's private so that it's not like you're putting a picture of yourself <laughs> in a compromising position. You know, you can kind of put that on there and, and ask like for fit issues, sewing issues, things like that. Instagram DMs are okay occasionally, but I don't encourage that. It's it's kind of stressful when I get a bunch of those for questions, and I do sometimes from complete strangers I've never even seen in the stream. They probably do the, like, um, they probably watch and maybe they're lurking, which I absolutely love and totally appreciate people who like to lurk. But when I get those out of the blue Instagram DMs and it's a really detailed thing, I, it sometimes takes me a couple days to reply because it's kind of hard to explain something. I will think about it. I'll sit there and go, how do I explain this? And I also don't want to just take up a ton of my time. Yeah, I think so, Sydney. I could try and find it. I don't know where my keyboard is. Yeah, Melinda, would you? Okay, cool. Yeah, that, that's why Ray keeps sending me money. I gotta do it so she stops giving me money. That's her effort to get us to do the Zoom sewing thing. Um, yeah, because I would like to do that. And I think, like, I'd like to learn more about, like, I know I can only have it for 40 minutes. And otherwise it's paid. And I don't understand that quite yet. All I did, I did a few tutorials on Zoom. I've only used it, like, three times. And I, I know that I'm not doing a conference. That's what I figured out so far. All right, so let's see. Let's see if I can find um, the, the group. Uh, why does it show my name? <laughs> okay, yeah, here's the, here's the um, so -so Live page. This isn't the group per se, but the group is there. And then let me see if I can understand how to find it. I think if you click, click community on the left, that gets you to the group. Maybe? Boy. Maybe not. How do you find how to get to the, the group? You're welcome, Derek. Ooh, that sounds so fun. Have fun. Keep those kitties cozy in that rainy weather. We'll see you next time. Do the part two on Wednesday and then Thursday for Saturday, I'm going to be sewing a knit dress. The Alcott by Kashmiret. Let's see, Summer. Does it really say I'm a public figure? I'm a private figure. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have to make the whole page. You know, the problem for me is that I am seeing this as the um, admin. I'm not seeing it as uh, someone uh, who is uh, not the admin. So. 
<laughs> right, Nancy? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. So, all right. Well, um, so, so life so is, yeah, exactly. That's the Facebook page, but there's a, there's a group. Oh, group. Here it is. It's on the right hand side for me. It says groups. Let's see if this link works for you guys. It says join group. I am in the group. And you know what? This doesn't show me logged in. That's why I'm not logged in. I have never logged into Facebook on this computer. This computer is pretty, you know, virginal, so to speak. Okay. So, um, but yeah, stay tuned, Summer. And if you follow me on like Instagram or just here, and I'll probably, um, I have a newsletter. If you go to my website, I'll announce any kinds of classes and things like that on there. So, ooh, a border print name for that would be really cute. <laughs> nice. Cool. All right. Well, uh, it's nice to see you guys like what you're interested in. Thanks for the feedback on the prices for the videos. Those supposedly be out this week, but I keep saying that and then something happens. So I'm not going to say that. Um, but I'm, I'm uh, formatting them right now as we speak. Oh, thank you, Nancy. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So yeah, uh, I, and I will go in and accept, you have to ask to be a part of there's three requests right now, so I will accept those right now. Oh, Sydney's one of them, and Allison, and Melinda. Approval. I kept getting this sewing center in Santa Rosa asking to be a part of it, and I, I said no to them four times. And the reason I did was because I didn't want them to start advertising in my group. I don't really know why they were asking, so... Hopefully it wasn't some like someone from the stream who owns it and they just want to be in the group, you know? I, I could I can't tell. So I just want it to be a chill place. I do not um, heavily moderate it, but I do look at it more regularly now, now that the app's working a little bit better. And um uh but that is a place for anyone to post things, ask questions triumphs, um, other things you like looking at, books, fabric selection, ask questions, fit questions, and uh, most people respond and it's pretty helpful. And, and even if you just want opinions and stuff like that. Nice, Nancy. Cool. Your bin bin patterns printed. You mean the PDF? <laughs> I've made so many of these. Oh my gosh. The lid though, I'm into making the lids. The lids are fun. They are sewn completely differently. I can't wait to see if anybody makes those. So, And the um, wallaby and the pocket bucket are going to probably go to pattern testing in the next week or two, I think. So if anyone's interested, let me know. Yay! So you spam it with video links. <laughs> yeah, Nancy. No, you, you really, that was really cool. That one, the, the gal, the, her last name is Bannon. She's so interesting. Does the uh, historical stuff. That's so cool. Nancy's all about promoting all my competitors. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for coming, you guys. And um, yeah, I'm Sarah Me. Follow me on Instagram if you want to see a little bit more and uh, especially up close photos. Um, join the Facebook group, uh, my newsletter. Check out the website for all video links and projects. We've done a lot of projects and I have them organized by projects. So if you go to the Sagebrush top, it'll have all the videos right there. Whereas on YouTube, you might kind of be haired off in a couple of different directions. Lids and clear fronts. Perfect. Yeah, I made a lid for a clear front one. And it was a panel print. It was cute. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Yes, I don't care. <laughs> Cool. All right, and then we're working. I really am working on the Zoom thing. I, I'm in all honesty and transparency. I am a hundred percent about doing that, and it is at the forefront of my thinking. It's every time I have to leave my home and stay with my family, even for a day or two, it it eats up most of my week because I have to go about packing up all my animals and everything in the dark usually 
we have to leave our fridge rotting with food. Then we come back, we have to clean our house of ash and dust and smoke. We boil um, rosemary on the stove, which changed one of our pots, by the way. And then, um, um, and get back on track. And it's so unsettling. It's like, we can't even get into a routine because it's happened to me almost every weekend the last month. I've only stayed at my parents twice, but every weekend we've been worried about fire. And it's not really that close to me. It's just where they're evacuating is right next to me, like one house away. So it's just that, it's just that you guys. I, I, it's like real life stuff is literally getting in the way of me getting anything done and it's aggravating. Plus my house doesn't have great internet. So um, it is at the forefront and I am working on it. So I have like lots of really good things in the works. Uh, the fire I think is, that's closest to me is 96% contained and the winds have died down. So um, right now, yes, but the fire season's young. I literally, the last time I was, the, la the last time we did this, like last weekend, I was like, oh, this weekend's going to be fine. We're going to have, we have a planned power outage, but at least this time there's no fire danger. And that night, I was, my daughter was digging our cat out from underneath our house at midnight in the pitch black with her flashlight dying and ash raining down on us. And we were going to my parents' house. So it was so dramatic. <laughs> I was like, just this morning, I was trimming blackberries in the front yard and hanging out and working in the yard because I can't do anything in the house because it's dark and I have no power. <laughs> so you just never know, you know? So, yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> Practice patience, yes. Yeah, I know, I know. Me too. So, my my home, my mom's looking at houses in Washington, Sydney, so we may meet someday. <laughs> oh, Nancy, I think of so many people. It's not even as bad for me as it is for some folks. And some folks who've actually survived some of these fires, this is very hard for them. The whole town of Paradise was evacuated again last weekend. This is very hard for them. They don't have power. They're, it's just a mess, you know? So there's not really a good way to find out about things that is completely trustworthy. It's hard, so yeah. And you know, I have to go and stay with my parents, which I'm sure for them is hard, you know? Like they love having us, that's not hard. But just emotionally, like the fact that they're seeing us do this, they're just, it's like, it's very, put you on edge, you know? All right, that's enough. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Okay, I gotta go. <laughs> See you guys Wednesday, all right? <laughs> oh, I was not chuckling about the other day. I couldn't even look at my husband for a few hours. I was like, her. <laughs> so. Oh, man. And I've been to the emergency vet twice in the last two weeks for two different pets. So. <laughs> yeah, but all in all, things are going really good. I joked with my friends last night. I was like, wow, at the beginning of the week, everything was pretty bleak. And by the end of the week, my favorite game got a new DLC. Things are looking up. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Bye, you guys. See ya.